So if we're going to do multi-qubit quantum computing, we're going to need a better magnetic field around our sample. That's because the um, while the Earth's magnetic field is pretty uniform, if you have any ferromagnetic objects around your house, uh, that's going to cause distortions and it's going to take away from your resolution. And the way we do that is by using these things called gradient coils, which act, which are basically electromagnets. Um, they use electricity to create a magnetic field. And um, we place those around our, our sample and they kind of undo, you know, the influences of the other objects around the house. Um, these uh, gradient coils can also be used in conjunction with um, just NMR in general to create an MRI. And so, yeah, the first step is we're going to make an MRI, um, but in order to do that, we need the gradient coils. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. There's various ways to use an electric field to create a magnetic field to change the field through an area. One way is to just kind of make these giant coils around it. And you can see that in this area, it's fairly uniform. Um, but there are improvements that could be made, like, you know, this area right here, the strength is a little stronger than, than this area. And towards the outside, it starts to like bend out and bend in a little bit. So we can do better. So in order to counteract all those edge effects and the changes in strengths, we just add more coils until it makes sense. Um, basically, the, these inner coils kind of make up for the lack of, of, you know, speciality of the outer coils. And um, the other thing we can do is um, if we set up the geometry correctly, we can actually just wrap this around the tube um, or, you know, your, your imaging section um, to make everything more compact and uh, yeah, make work better. Plan A was to write a code which created a generic loop on the cylinder, plug that configuration into MagpyLib, which is a Python library for um, testing magnetic fields, and then tested how uniform that field was. So once that was set up, it would make small alterations to that configuration and then test them on that criteria of giving me the field that I'm looking for. Um, Iteratively, this should have converged to the right answer. In practice, however, it tended to converge to kind of like a scramble configuration or sometimes this uh, Pac-Man ghost configuration, um, which didn't look completely right. Um, and the other thing is that there was no guarantee that it con uh, converged to the uh, optimal. It had a good chance of just finding a local optimum. So plan B, was that I found the code on GitHub, which will design, which was made for uh, designing gradient coils, and um, it spits out uh, basically the points of that coil in 3D uh, coordinates, a comma-separated uh, file. Um, and so basically, I just kind of put in the parameters that I was looking for in these points here. So the file um, that came out of, whoops, it came out of the uh, gradient generating script. Um, that one is, you know, gives you 3D coordinates, but I don't need that. I need that flattened out so that I can get it printed out to PCB and then, you know, refold it myself. And so I wrote a script which just uses some trigonometry to, uh, you know, flatten it out. This is FreeCAD. I can just uh, create new. And then I've got the script saved on a different part so copy the first part python doesn't like things so you can see that it loaded the data and then copy the second part it takes a minute and there you go there is the coil points um, basically when you load this into, so you can save this as um, you export it as a um, DXF file, and then you can load it into KiCad. And in KiCad, you'll be you'll you know erase these extra lines that you don't need. You need to connect this um, you know in the right order, because if you correct it in the wrong order, then your polarity of your coils is off. So you gotta kind of you know go through it in your head. Uh, make sure all the coils are in the right direction, and then there you can also pick the how wide the lines are going to be. 
and then you can save it as a Gerbil file or export it um, for a company to uh, print it out for you. Um, I went with uh, PCB way because JLC PCB uh, doesn't do flexible. I've got my test set up here. Um, if you look closely, so that's the magnetic field from this magnetic field wand. It's basically just a microcontroller and a BNO 055. <clears throat> and where I live, it has a field of about 50 milliteslas, if I remember correctly. Milli or micro, I always forget. On the other Arduino window, I have this set up right here. So I've got an Arduino and it's connected to this transistor right here. And so what I'm doing is I have it set up to ground and uh, digital 9. Um, that goes through the opto coupler, opto isolator, isolator. And then, um, you know, one of them goes to the high side, one of them goes to the control. And so basically I'm um, PWMing this guy right here so I don't turn it on all the way. Um, and it's relatively warm. I'm basically getting to the limits of um, what one set of transistors can do. Um, fortunately, feeling the coil, I'm nowhere near the limit of this, so if I need more field, I can always just add more of these in parallel. And um, yeah, so right now I have it, I, I gave it about, um, I would say, 30% duty cycle, and that corresponds to about 3.3 amps and uh, 3 watts. Um, so yeah, voltage, uh, amps, and watts, and um, it's a little noisy. That's my power supply, but um, that can be fixed later, later with a, I don't know, high pass circuit or um, just getting a better power supply. Um, my main test here is to make sure that this guy can put up enough field without melting. And so I have it lined up with the Earth's magnetic field vector, which kind of points out like that. And so I can add the magnetic testing wand here. Oh, I'll just ruin that lineup. There we go. And um, when we look at the field, it's kind of jumping all over the place because of the power supply. But the point is that sometimes when I get it in the right place, it goes down to basically zero, which is what I'm looking for. Um, that's that third line, the, the B right there. Um, basically I'm taking the X, Y, and Z uh, components and, you know, taking the square root and then, or, you know, squaring them and taking the square root. Um, but the important part is that if I then move the magnetic testing wand to the other side, you know, across to the other gradient, it's hard to do with one hand. You see the magnetic field goes up to about 100 even 150. So that means that the power of this system is high enough to more than counteract the Earth's magnetic field. So yeah, it seems to work. So that's the coil. Um, the next steps is to try to use my CNC to kind of get a grid of how the field looks like inside the coil, um, make sure that's as uniform as the theory says. I'm planning on rewriting the ANMR code um, to run on a uh, Raspberry Pi Pico um, because it'll be faster and it won't have the AVR dude issues that the current code has. It won't have all the bells and whistles, but that's okay for now. Um, if people are interested, I'm going to try to make a video for MRIs, um, just like the basic theory, my take on the basic theory of them, how they work. Um, so yeah, uh, subscribe if that sounds interesting to you and stay crunchy.